Preachers of LA episode 1. Shout out to my sister because she reminded me that this came on. I didn't even know shit came on, so I had to catch it on demand. But we'll get on into it. Um, There's some people that I like. Some people I might not like as the episode go on, but we'll get into it anyway. The cast starts with um, Bishop Noel Jones. And um, he has a girl, a girl, a friend. Then he has Ditch, um, Pastor Dietrich Haddon and his girlfriend, Dominique. Pastor Ryan Gibson and his wife, um, I think it's LeVette. Yeah, LeVette. And then Pastor Jay Hoslip. I hope I'm not pronouncing that right, um, wrong. And his wife, um, Christy. Um, you have Pastor Wayne Chaney and his wife, Maisha. And Pastor Clarence McClendon and his wife, Priscilla. I don't know if I'm gonna like everybody. I'm gonna go in even on the people I do like. Okay, I'm just letting y'all know. Um, I like Pastor Ron Gibson, in, and I used to go to his church. Um, many years ago when I was in high school, I was going to his church. So it was like back in the '90s. So, um, he's a real cool person. And so far, what you see on this this first episode, trust me, that's what you see at church. I'm just saying. Like, he is just exactly the same way you saw him thugged out. If you want to call him thugged out, gangster, ghetto, whatever. That's what the, whatever you saw on TV, that's what you saw. Even the affection towards his wife. Um, so anyway, let's get into it. It starts off with um, Dietrich Hatting. He's singing with his daughter. I guess they had a studio or whatever, but he's singing at a piano with his daughter. His girlfriend, Dominique, comes in. They start talking about a concert that he's performing. At, um, he's doing at Bishop Noel Jones Church or whatever. And it's kind of the reintroduction of him being like back in the ministry or whatever from him taking his hiatus or whatever. Um, they show his backstory of how he was preacher when he was like a little boy and how he got married young. They were with cheating in the marriage. So he got out that marriage. He moved to L.A. Then he got with Dominique. They, she got pregnant. So his whole storyline is being pregnant. You know, having a girlfriend and a baby out of wedlock or whatever. But my thing is, how you want, how you, regardless if this is real life, regardless if, um, you know, like I said, regardless if this is real life and he needs to tell his story, I don't know if this shit should be broadcast. Maybe because, maybe just because they're getting married probably within the season or whatever. But my thing is, I don't care. I'm old school. I was raised old school so i don't think the world should conform the church should conform to the world i think the world should conform to the church so with that being said that's kind of hard to see um them like glamorizing this man of god being with a woman out of wedlock on tv with a baby i don't care if you guys are working towards that marriage but to just glorify that just to get him back into the church I don't. I, I kind of felt a little off about that situation because, like I said, I'm old school, and ain't no way in the world we growing up they would have glorified somebody being a preacher and having a child out of wedlock on TV. Like, it just wouldn't happen. But to each his own. To each his own. If he's saving lives, hey. Um. They also show. Okay. Anyway, they were talking about the little concert or whatever, and him, him reintroducing himself into the church or whatever. So. Then they show Pastor Ron and his wife. He's telling her that a young man in Compton got shot at, shot up, I don't know. But he's a young little crip dude up in Compton. So he wants to go talk to him or whatever. So his wife is like, who's, who's going with you? And he was like, God. And if that don't work, I'm say, my gun. I was like, okay, my dear nephew. But my thing is, that kind of little, I was like, wait, hold on. To me, you ain't got enough faith in God that you're going to be taking your gun with you now people can say hey you can call it faith or you can call it not being stupid but my thing is just like to glorify that i don't know if i want to know if my pastor because i live in the hood and i call my pastor well i don't i'm not saying i live in the hood but if i lived in the hood and my pastor came to see me she got to bring a piece to come with her no 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 because you like i thought you know like i said i was raised old school and that shit wasn't allowed I mean, I'm not saying it wasn't allowed, but it wasn't heard of, of preachers carrying a gun to the hood. Uh, it just kind of was weird. So, anyway, um, I like his wife. What you see is what you get with her, too. She's sweet as pie. I like how she gives good advice. Even, like, 
just knowing her, well, you know, not knowing her, but meeting her at the church, she was the same person. She'd give you advice. She, she was just sweet. Um, but they show his backstory. He was an ex a gang member, like back in the seventies and shit. And he was um a gang member. He was on PCP. He overdosed on PCP, and his mama prayed it out of him. That's that black mama for you. I just swear they just just be praying some shit out of you. And I understand that because I've heard I was heard told stories, you know, coming up in the church that they was high and they came out saved. So it can't happen. Um. Now, some of them people, I'd be like, y'all need to go back to the altar. I'm just saying, like, you know, people, sometimes when you was, when you was saved in the 70s and 80s, sometimes I think you need to go back and get dipped. I'm just saying. Because some people, they backslide, but then still bring up when they got, you know, saved in the 80s and 70s. But y'all be the same motherfuckers that would call me on a Sunday night after church and gossip. Just saying. I ain't saying no names, but if hey, if the shoe fits. Um, Bishop Noel Jones, they show him talking to his friend. He said there's not his girlfriend, not his wife. They just friends. And I'm sitting there like, see, another thing that's being glorified. Like, you a single pastor wanting to live the, the life of a single man. You, you talking about you want to drive your car as fast. You know, that's illegal. You want to do all this kind of stuff as a single person. And I'm sitting there like, but don't you preach to your church to get married and have a family and do things the right way. So for you to not be doing that type of thing, I kind of got rubbed the wrong way. Like I said, a lot of these preachers, I was like, oh. but then I was like, okay, I, that don't make me not like you. It just makes me be like, wait a minute, hold on. I'm just not saying that I don't like you. It's just some things that, regardless if it is your reality, some shit shouldn't be glorified on TV when you're trying to have a church show and bring people to Christ. I don't know. And maybe you're trying to show people like, um, I could be just like you or whatever, but I don't know. It may be because I, like I said, I was raised in an old school church and that shit just didn't happen. Like, no, the old people just got around you and just prayed for you and hopefully you turned your life around, but it wasn't let me conform. Let me show you that it's okay. Regardless of what they did, they didn't say it was okay. So, mm. so anyway... Um, yeah, that being single, I was just like, yeah, whatever. But, they show Dietrich had it, she went, he went to Dominique's house. They don't live together because of religious reasons and all this kind of stuff. But I'm sitting there like, yeah, that's why you were supposed to marry her. Maybe you should have married her when she was pregnant. I understand you guys didn't know each other that long or whatever, but shit, you fucked her and you didn't know her that long. So maybe you should have hurried up and married her before you put her on TV and y'all don't live together. Then you gotta go see your damn daughter whenever you go see her because y'all don't live together, like. That's what you're showing young preachers? I don't know. It's just kind of weird. Um, He also talks to, I think it was her mother, grandmother, or something like that, and was talking about how stressed out he was about the concert and yada, yada, yada. So then they show Pastor Ron and his wife. He's telling her about the Dietrich Hall um, had in show that he was invited to do the, um, I am not want to say the benediction, but the invitation to Christ, I guess you want to call it. Um... And then he was telling her about the man cave and stuff like that. And the man cave is like for preachers or whatever. And she left. And, you know, he was, they had a little cute, I like the way he talked to her. I really do. I think, I think they have a little cute relationship. Um, They show Dietrich had in and he's rehearsing, being, huh, when it comes to these people that I understand you put on a show and you want it perfect. And they he wants the music perfect. He wants the choir perfect and all that. But I'm sitting there like, when do you go overboard from trying to make this show perfect to saving souls? Because it was more of making it a perfect show than it was of saving souls. It was more of introducing him as Dietrich had in the artist and not Dietrich had in the pastor, the person that's going to save you. So that kind of was just like weird. Um, but I understand when you have a show, you get crazy and you want everything right so i gave him a little pass on that one whatever um pastor j i don't want to say his last name because i don't want to mess it up so pastor j h i mean not <laughs> pastor j what's his last name um yeah h okay but i'm gonna call him pastor j but anyway him and his wife they tatted up he got his wife named christy they've been together 26 years 
they cool. They they seem like they cool. They got two churches. They they seem real nice. He kind of looked like Dave Sotero from the um wedding show on WeTV. That's what he reminded me. He just looked like that. But they they seem like a real cool people. They um she was talking about how she wants to be like in the home front, and he was like, you don't have to come to all of our services. We got eight services. You ain't got to come to all of them. You know, just keep doing you, being you. Because she was like, it's a lot to juggle being the wife, the mother, the first lady, stuff like that. So, they just wanted to find a balance. They was, you know, I liked them. They were skateboarding. And his story was like, he was a skateboarder. He came from, I think, down south. And he moved to California. And everything was around him was skateboarding. So, that's the lifestyle he got um, adapted to. And I and I like this couple. I like them, how they interact with each other. I like how he was on the beach preaching. He was just seemed like an overall cool dude. I'll go to your church. You tied it up and shit. You just showed you that you was about that life and you turned your life around. So, I, I, you know, I thought that was cool. Um, Pastor, who else was next? Pastor Wayne Cheney. He is a pastor in Long Beach, California. His church is right down the street from my granny house. I have a lot of people on my Facebook friends that goes to his church. So I heard his church was cool. This couple is more like a sexual couple. This is the one that like, okay, you can be safe, sanctified, and still sexual at the same damn time. And I, they seemed like they was cool. Their little relationship seemed cool. They were talking about the Dietrich Haddon concert. Um, the kids, they trying to get them some a long time. The kids come interrupt them they a long time. But that was basically what they showed about them. Um, then they showed Bishop Clarence McClendon and his wife Priscilla. I guess they being stalked by somebody. And... Um, so they want to get higher, more security. They want to get uh, a restraining order on this person. And now she claiming that the kids is her. Just some crazy, random, crazy bitch. And they need to step their game up. Because Pastor McClendon is really known. He's been known all over the world. And to me, I think he's lost where the boundaries get um, crossed when it comes to saving the souls and getting some money to me. I think he treats his church like a business. And I'm not with that. I'm just not with a, a preacher get so many people and then they want to treat them like customers or clients or whatever. And you're not treating them like your church family. So that's what I got from him. He seemed kind of iffy to me. I wasn't feeling him. So if you were, sorry, my bad. Oh, well, I don't give a damn. Um, they showed the video. Um, no, Pastor Ron goes to... Um, Go see JR. Then they got these old ass gangsters. Um, what's his name? Rick Dog. Yeah. There's a time in your life where you don't wear ponytails. I don't give a damn what hood you from, where you from. I don't damn I don't give a damn. I don't even hope I'm I hope I'm not offending nobody. But I'm sorry, but when you get a certain fucking age, them ponytails, didn't you see Snoop grow out that shit? Like, that's when that shit just get played the hell out. But he rolls up on them in his little drop top or whatever. No nice ass car. I ain't gonna get you wrong, but Pastor Ron kind of crosses too where shit. You don't know if this nigga still game banging or if he a preacher. But he still intertwines where he can still relate. So I'll get him on that one. Um, he runs into, like I said, Rick Dog Jr. Comes some other little gangsters come up. They high five and giving him highs or whatever. He's talking to Jr. about him getting shot up. And he shows Jr. an obituary of his dad. Like, fool. I just buried did the obituary for your dad. Like, I don't want to have to do another funeral for you. You better than this. Like, come on now. And then they, um, they showed a clip of um, Pastor Ron talking to the boy's dad or whatever. And I was just like, damn, I ain't got to remember this shit of his daddy dying. So, anyway, he um, Pastor Ron invited them to DJ Cutter's concert. Told him he wanted to see him there. And... You know, it was he prayed with them. He talked to them about being better and all that kind of stuff. So it was really cool, real cool conversation, and it was a real, real conversation between a pastor and some gang members. So they wasn't, oh man, get out of here with that. They were taking whatever. If even if they wasn't listening, they was acting like they was listening. So that was cool. Um, concert time. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> I guess this was their first time coming out as a couple, all that kind of stuff. They did good. Overall, the dancing was cool. The church was cool. Everybody was rocking with this church. Um, one thing I can say about Bishop Noel Jones Church, it, it rocks. It 
rocks. Like, from everything I've seen on YouTube, from being going there, like, people go, I know go there. I mean, like, this church rocks. Every, everybody you know in L.A. be talking about they going to Bishop Noel Jones Church. Even if you've seen in the beginning when it came on, my cousin was in the beginning. She was the girl with the glasses on, with the little pretty, pretty, prissy fan. I was like, this girl is really at church with glasses on and a fan. When they introduced Bishop Noel Jones, so if you can see that part, you'll see her. And I was like, that's her. So it's not just her at church. I don't want y'all. Mm -mm, my cousin is like that regardless. If we had our big mama house, she would still be sitting on that couch with her glasses and her fan. And it could be cold in the house. I'm just saying. Like, that's just her. She deep it out. But they church really was grooving. The pastor Ron was getting his dance on. The white pastor was like, oh, you can tell I'm white because I ain't dancing like Pastor Ron. But I like them. His wife was amazed on how everybody was dancing and partying. And Bishop Noah Jones Church is like that. And I'm quite sure Dietrich Cadden Church is like that, too. For him to be able to come over to Bishop Noah Jones Church and rock it like that. I'm quite sure his church is like that, too. So, yeah. Nowadays, basically, churches is like that. Now, would I want to go to a church like that? Maybe twice off the month. But sometime in me, I need that old school church. I need some people to make the music with shouting on the floor with the, you know, making music with their hands just clapping sometime. So, I don't know. I don't know if I can do this every, like, four or five Sundays out the month. But I get it. If that's where you're going to get reap souls from, young people, go ahead for it. Um... When Pastor Rob went up there, he was called up to do the invitation to Christ or whatever. He called a Rick Dog and um, Jr. He's preaching, um, you know, trying to minister to them about getting their life together and going back to the hood and telling everybody God is good and all that kind of stuff. Did you have, have him whispered in his ear to hurry up? And I'm sitting there like, for real? For real? No, you don't do that. Sorry. Um... Anyway, after that, Pastor Ron, he goes talk to his wife about the they talking about the church and they talk, I mean, the concert. He's talking about how he want to approach um, Dietrich Cadet at the man cave on um, how he made him hairy up. And his wife was like, no, baby, don't do that in front of everybody. You do that on your time with you and him because, you know, maybe he'll feel ganged up on. So, you know, take it in the wrong, take it in the right approach. And then, like I said, I like Levette for even saying that. Like I said, she's a cool person. He wrote good, real good advice. Um, then they get to Pastor Ron's house and they have the man cave. They got pool tables. They, you know, doing it the most. Like men do in a man cave. So then Pastor Ron's like, let's go sit down talk. We're going to do this dialogue. But we also enter, put the Bible up in the conversation. So they were doing that. They were talking about asking for money for the church and all this kind of stuff. So that conversation came up. So everybody was, I don't know. I had mixed feelings with that because Pastor Ron... And Dietrich Cadden was kind of saying, no, you don't ask them for no money. But then Pastor McClendon was like, well, you don't ask them for some money, but you do ask them for because you got all these people and people coming with you. And I'm sitting there like, that ain't got shit to do with the church. When you bring them people, you pay them. That ain't got shit to do with the church. So even Pastor Dietrich Cadden was just like, so you wouldn't go to smaller churches? You know what I'm saying? So he was just basically like, no, like. And that's what I was getting from him. He might didn't say it, but that's what I was getting from um, Bishop, Bishop McClendon. And I was just like, he rubs me the wrong way. I seem iffy. He, I wouldn't go to his church. He couldn't save my soul. I'm just not with that. When y'all get this big old, big old, you know, fame or whatever, y'all can't go to the smaller churches in the hood on the corner by the liquor store. That shit bothers me. You got the church people have to have this big major following flock for you to go there. And I'm just like Dietrich Cutting, like, you didn't have all of that before you, you know what I'm saying, before you got saved and all these followers. So why would you turn your back on your little man? You know what I'm saying? That's basically what he was saying. So then Bishop McClendon was talking shit. He was, you know, like degrading Bishop, um, I mean, Pastor um, Haddon. He was like, like, you beneath me, you young, I ain't got to hear you, and all this kind of stuff. So, you know, Dietrich was like, shit, I'm not going to be disrespected. You ain't, like, he jumped all up at him. I don't know if he was jumping at him or just walking away, but that shit wasn't cute. So, um, yeah, I wasn't liking that. But th that's how the episode ended up going off with them kind of arguing. And Dietrich, um, not Dietrich, Bishop um, McClendon ended up walking out or whatever. Because they were talking about having an entourage and all this kind of shit. And I'm just like, for church? 
You don't need an entourage. You need your Bible and you. That's it. But needing somebody to get you some damn water, get it yourself. Who the hell was getting your water when you first did your first sermon? You. Um, better get the usher boy to get you some damn water. But you don't need no personal assistance. I don't give a damn. Like, make them stay at home and run the office. But they don't have to be everywhere with you. So, anyway, that was my review for, um, Preacher's Wife LA Episode 1. Make sure you rate, comment, subscribe. Follow me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Keep. I do everything by the get of you, T-H-A, not T-H-E, except my Instagram is MissNika69, M-I-Z-Z-N-E-K-A-69. Follow me, I'll follow you back. Shout out to my girl, Ashley Miller, 1987, Mike B 801 I would love for him to do a review for this, because I would love for him to hear what he got to say for this show. Um, Because, you know, he go to church too, and I like to hear church people comment on this type of shit. So, um, yeah, check out Ashley, check out Mike B. Thank you guys, um, Ashley and Mike, for um, helping me grow my channel. I really love and appreciate that. Um, follow them. Talk to them. They talk back just like I do. All right. Peace.